Good day, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Lanfrica Talks. I'm your host, Chris, and for those who are new, Lanfrica Talks is a show that is focused on amplifying diverse viewpoints on AI, technology, and data. Through the Lanfrica Talks and through the various speakers that we have and the conversations we have, we try to cultivate an inclusive platform where diverse perspectives thrive and through this we aim to reshape the conversation to reflect a more equitable understanding of AI's impact on our world. Today we have a very special guest Okpayemi Oshakwade. She is a second year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. She's also engaged in the study of speech models with a particular focus on low resource languages. Her research is centered on enhancing the robustness of speech representation learning techniques to address the intricate challenges posed by code switching and tonal variations in speech. This is a really wonderful area of research right now around the domain of speech. And we're very happy to have you, Okbayami, and the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll just go right into the presentation today, uh, and that is um, Unraveling Yoruba Tonal Tapestry. Um, I'll be focusing on the advances and challenges in speech recognition through, through Hubert's lens. So this can be complicated, but we will, yeah, let's just check. Let's unravel the, let's unravel the, presentation topic. So we will start by checking what Hubert is. Uh, Hubert is a type of self-supervised speech representation learning. I will get into that. Um, then we talk about Yoruba tonal tapestry. We unravel that. And then we put those two together by checking the advances and challenges we have in, we are able to see in speech recognition. So let's start with self-supervised speech representation learning. Um, from this, we have two different things, self-supervised and um, speech representation and speech representation learning. Speech representation learning itself, it's a way to transform raw audio data into a format that, that captures the characteristics of speech. So um, it is not just, it is not a direct um, implementation. It is not like we are trying to extract speech to do text, to do speech to text or, or other ways like that. It is not a downstream tax in itself. It's a, it's a means to an end. So it is basically trying to, extract the features of a raw audio form um yeah to learn the features the underlying features so we can learn things like the phonemes the intonations and um, also we can from that we can learn the speaker attributes this uh, learned representations are usually used for different tasks so we can use the lens representation for speech recognition, um, emotion detection, speaker identification, and it, we can also use it for text to speech, speech to text things around that. Then let's talk about what self supervised self supervision is. The idea behind that is the fact that, um, for example. If we want to do speech to text, um, speech to text, we don't, um, infants don't learn um, their languages by being presented speech and text. But in general machine learning, in supervi supervised learning, even in unsupervised learning, most times you have to pro provide your text and also provide your speech for you to be able to do downstream, downstream tasks like text to speech. But the idea of self-provision is the fact that children don't do, 
don't get presented that, but they still learn underlying um underlying features of speech and they are able to speak it. So this is what this is the core idea behind self-supervised speech representation learning. Can we train our model to be able to understand these underlying features um, and then translate them to and then translate them to downstream tasks like text to speech, um, speech to text, emotion, emotion recognition, um, yeah, or things like that. So we asked ChatGPT what self-supervised speech representation is. And um, we have this point, just like I said, self-supervised is to understand and process speech data. And it's also learning it's um, learning these representations itself by itself as a learning guide. And it relies on, it does rather than relying on external annotations or labeled data set. In itself, in self-supervised learning, the model is exposed to large volumes of unlabeled speech. So this is just emphasizing what we said. We'll come back to this part. Um, I just want you to notice the highlights. This is red. We will come back to that. Yes, yeah, since the um, introduction of self-supervised speech representation, there had been several papers trying to do this same thing um, using different techniques, right? Because, and it has seemed to be very useful in understanding underlying features in speech representations. Um, these are also several, um, um, these are also several models in different using different techniques right from 2015 where when uh, self-supervised model um, has been introduced and they they were focused on different techniques like generative some are contrastive predictive and all that this just basically shows that this is a, an, a very interesting area of research where a lot of effort is being put in um yeah but with the fact that a lot of effort is being put in this area we still need something very important large volumes of unlabeled speech data um and this is not as available as we is not available for all languages um we have volumes of data especially on label speech um for very high resource languages like like english um, um maybe french and and very of uh, other very limited high resource languages so for yoruba language we don't have enough of this um this will this can post um this can result to some difficulties in using these models to do downstream tasks in Yoruba language. So we'll go back, we'll, go, we'll move to this topic, um, Yoruba stonal tapestry. Let me check this. Yoruba generally is spoken by 40 million, 40 million human beings. And I think this is the minimum because I'll say this is the minimum because um, we find uh, people are moving around the world nowadays. Um, so this will be the minimum number of speakers. Um, it is majorly spoken in Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, and um, Cote d'Ivoire, Syria alone, and every other places where you can find Yoruba, Yoruba natives. Um, this is this was gotten from a research by David Adelani, where he created a database for uh, machine translation for Yoruba English. Yeah, the idea is even with um, minimum speakers of forty million, Yoruba language is still low resource. 
the th this is because we have a lot of speakers, but we do not have the representation online, which poses the issue of um low resource, which made it low resource because we don't have enough data available online to train our models. Apart from the fact that it is low resourced, um, another additional problem is because in Yoruba, the tone on individual syllable, it ch changes the meaning of the word. So we um, we can have things like motipon omi, which means I have fetched water. And also I have things like motipon oka, I have made pap. So the change in tone of this, this syllable changes the whole sentence. Um, changes the meaning of the word and then it changes the whole sentence. We also have example of oh, inheritance. Oh, yeah, this is I I don't oh, and also have well, if we have oh, that is war. This is me tone. And we can also have Ogun, which is God of Iron. This, all these are the same, the same phonemes, but uh, all these words have the same phonemes, but the tones are different. Therefore, we have totally different um, pronunciation and also totally different meaning of the word. So the um, research question in this presentation is, to what extent does self-supervised representation learning models capture tonal features in Yoruba language? We have seen that self-supervised representation models are very vast and there's a lot of research going on in that area. Um, but does it capture your, the tones in Yoruba language? Um, with the, with all the work that has been done in this field, there has been emphasis on Hubert and Hubert has posed, um, has shown, has been evaluated. Hubert has, uh, Hubert has been evaluated to capture more phonetic related features um, compared to every other um, self-supervised speech representation models. So we are currently going, to, we are going to be evaluating Hubert to see how, how much, to what extent it captures the tones in Yoruba language. Um, Hubert is basically Bet applied to speech. So um bet what bet is a very common um model in language modeling generally. And the idea behind bet is the masking um masking property. Um we can check it. looking at here what bet does is to mask a certain part of the input, which was the idea behind it was text, um, mask a certain part of the text, the representation of the text, and the model is trained to predict the masked part of the text. So um, for example, this is showing max 50% of the representation of the text, then this model, is the, the BERT model is trained. So given the 50% that is not masked, it is trained to predict the 50% that is masked. And this helps to, um, in applications where you want to predict the next thing, um, for example, in text prediction, right? You want to predict the next word or after a word, yeah. But Hubert is applying this to speech. 
And the difference between speech and text, right, is because speech is continuous. Um, you don't necessarily have the ability to use the same format on text or of text on speech because speech is continuous and um, text is discrete. You can just um, you can just extract the features and um, go ahead to do the masking. So the idea behind Hubert, before going before the before um going into the bet path is to ensure to discretize the speech. Um so what it does first is to extract extract the features of speech um by um using the clustering uh, means. So it extracts the features from the audio, extract the MFCCs and cluster the MFCCs. So um, it assigns each feature vector from MFCCs to a particular cluster. So we can see it here. And this and from the chemist clustering, it extracts the eating unit embeddings. So each each cluster is assigned features and um, these features becomes the eating unit embedding. And this eating unit embedding is um, then passed into um, a context network. That's the transformer encoder where the bet is applied that is the masking um where that is where the masking is um trained where that is where the transformer is trained and that which is basically the masking and prediction um then um to ensure that this clustering um produce produce the right eden embeddings the from each layer of the transformer, this transformer is made up of eleven layers, and from this um transformer, we reuse intermediate layers from each from different layers, but the the in Hubert, the layer used we use the layer six and then the nine because these layers were found to be able to extract phonetic features and this this out the layer the features from these layers are we clustered and and this is the training process right they are clustered and which results to the eating units embeddings and these embeddings can also can then be used to do downstream tasks um one very interesting um paper that used this apart from the regular i'll say the regular up downstream tax you use um speech representations for is this paper this paper this paper the laughter synthesis um using pseudo phonetic tokens with large scale in the wild laughter couples. So this paper basically used the hidden units from Hubert to synthesize laughter. And this is really interesting because Hubert in itself is trained on English speech. It is not laughter. The base model is trained on English speech which doesn't really represent laughter but this paper used it to represent um to synthesize laughter this is how powerful the representations are i'll play some samples so we see yeah this is um these are some of the samples <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, just to show how um interesting Hubert representations are. But we want to see since it's able to do, and apart from that, the Hubert based model generalizes also on generalizes also on other languages. It is able to capture the phonetic um representations in other languages like Gaelic. Um, Gaelic is a language in is a Scottish language, and just with the Hubert model, without retraining, without fine tuning. Just reclustering, just reclustering the model on Gaelic data, it's able to produce um, sint correct synthesis of Gaelic language. So back to our research question, to what extent is it able to recognize the tone features in Yoruba language? This is our method. We extracted the phone um, from we extracted um phones and the uh, time alignment from our speech and then we passed our speech the extracted phones and the extracted word and their time alignment um to obtain the Hubert re discrete representation for our audio file not to forget we use we are using the same um the same techniques that are used by all these other papers that have used Hubert for their downstream tasks. Um, yeah. And we reclustered on Yoruba language and extracted our Hubert representation for both word and then phones. Um, we now tried to compare these phones, this Hubert unit at different clusters. Uh, the paper, the original paper from Hubert says 100 clusters was great, produced great results. Um, um, then we should, it was also mentioned that 50 clusters should also produce good results because those is, those are close to the number of, number of, um, alphabets, number of phonemes, we can also say alphabets in English. So we tried, because that is also similar to Yoruba, we then we tried to look at the closest um, type of um, phonemes in English and Yoruba, and these are plosives. Um, and this we can see that they have similar patterns, although not exactly because we have more um, more words for the English data, but we can see similar patterns in this um, in the plosives. So we went ahead to check the purity of the clusters. Um, the, we check the phone purity, which is how often are the clusters assigned to the same phone, to the same label. So in, let's say we have 50 labels, in 50, in label 30, how many, how many, how often is um, the, maybe ha assigned to that particular label 30. Um, and that is what phone purity measures. We check this across the number of units, number of clusters. And the idea basically is that the more the number of clusters, the higher the purity. Yeah, because it just gets reassigned and it lends um, um, intrinsic features. Yeah, so the idea is the higher the form purity, the, the higher the number of clusters, the higher the form purity. And unit purity is how well the representations group together similar linguistic units. So in each cluster, how well will this cluster represent a particular 
linguistic unit. And the idea with unit purity basically is the higher the cluster, the lower the unit purity. And we see that this pattern, although the values are lower in Yoruba data, but we see that the this pattern is same. They, they, they both follow the same pattern, which makes us think, oh yeah, this may this shows that Yoruba um Hubert learns the patterns in Yoruba. Um then we can perform more analysis. Um, narrowing down to the tone. Then we tried AB, AB, AB phone, ABX dis phone distribute um discrimination test across um cluster fifty and cluster thirty, and we um our test was to show that okay when we have C, C, yeah that is me C yeah me C and C ray and we have B um and we ensure that the phones before um these words were different so that we can measure the similarity okay abx phone description test is basically trying to get the similarity between two words and the idea is if um, we have A, B, and X1. Um, we should be able to say A, B, um, X1 is closer to B in the sample space, or X1 is closer to A. Um, and the higher the value, the distance, the the lower the distance, the better. Um, the better the similarity right so here this is the speech this is the script representation from hubert um yeah this is the this um this is the hubert discrete discrete representation from hubert um for this and we see that measuring the distance because this is me and this is me we expect that this should be closer than Ray and than Ray and me. Now checking the distances, we see that X1 is more similar to B. X1 is more similar to B, which is very correct. But then we see that X2 is also more similar to B. X2 is also more similar to B. Okay, X1 is similar to B, which is wrong. Um, and X2 is more similar to B, which is correct. We tried, okay, maybe it is a small cluster and a larger cluster will learn a better representation. But we see that um, we have X1 is more similar to B based on the distances. X1 is more similar to B, which is still wrong. But now we have another wrong um, thing, which says um, X2 is more similar to A, which is wrong. So we see that this pattern doesn't um, work in Yoruba language tones. Then we try to see, okay, um, if we can't get the cluster right, can we just measure and see the correlation between the different um, phones and the different tones in Yoruba language. Um, yeah. So let's look at, so we can see a pattern here. So it is the thicker the, the thicker the colors, the more far apart the phones, the tones are. When I say phones, I meant things like ha, he, he, things like that. But then the tones, I'm talking about the high pitch and the mid and do, re, mi in Yoruba language. So let's check this properly. Um, I have like a, 
like uh, what's it called here so like a chart here that shows this representation so hey h is me ha me ha yeah then he itself is the mid tone we ha then a l is low tone ha does do ha yeah so this chart helps inform this so yeah we expect that the the meat of this is going to be very light um showing that showing high correlation but um the patterns we see here shows that it is seen all the variants of her phone and is able to say they are highly similar and is also seeing the very this there's a pattern here showing that the um I, he, her, and he are very similar phones. Um, and if we check this also, it's showing here, the pattern here is showing that all, all the variants of all are also very similar. And we have a very slight, but not very defined phone, um, correlation in who in who so um what is this basically saying is that Hubert's representation is learning that all the ha <clears throat> re do and me variants of ha are the same are very similar and it is not distinguishing between either of them and um, from this pattern, we see this is what Hubert is learning. It is learning the vowel chart here, where um, all the front vowels are similar. That is what where we have he, ha, he, no oh my, he, he, and ha, he, he, he. This front vowels, he, he, and he, ah, he, ah, he, 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 yeah. So, he, he, he are similar. All the front vowels are similar, and all the back vowels are similar. And um, this is the, the ha. He, the he is different from all of them. So this is the pattern it is learning and not tones. It learns the phonemes and is able to differentiate between the phonemes, but it's not able to differentiate between the tones. So the conclusion here is that Hubert-based model captures phoneme features in Yoruba language, but we can't find, or we can't find tonal features in it. And the implication of this is that if these representations are used for speech recognition, it's going to be inaccurate because um, we will have a lot of inaccurate um, recognition, in inaccurate, um, for example, text, speech to text. If we use this representation, we, might, we are going to have wrong um wrong text um in uh in, we are going to have wrong text and also poor semantic understanding um the model our model will most likely misunderstand the intended messages and from our example it might use it might it might um it might predict ogun instead of ogun or yeah, it's just going to, it's not going to um, present us with the right semantics. Um, and also in context, it's not, able, it's not going to be able to capture context. Um, 
for also for language translation in cases where we are trying to translate Yoruba to another language using these Hubert representations, it's going to be ineffective. It's it might be it might translate the wrong word in English because it doesn't know the difference between ogun and ogun and which is ineffective. So the future work now is to see um, other tonal languages. Um, tonal languages are very common in Africa. Um, we have several of them. We are going to evaluate the Hubert representations on them to come to a very concrete, concrete conclusion about the representations of um, the features Hubert is able to learn. Also, we are going to evaluate with other self-supervised representation learning like waf to vec data to vec and um, see what, and to be able to identify why Hubert doesn't capture tones. And also we will do try, um, we evaluate using other downstream tasks like um, speech synthesis. If we synthesize Hubert, these representations from Hubert, um, what output do we have? Um, and yeah, synthesize using those downstream tasks. Thank you, that's the end of the talk this evening. Um, yeah, I will take questions.